All right, we are going to discuss ionic bonding. To kick things off, uh, we need to understand the foundation concept that noble gases are the most stable, electrically stable, and the least reactive elements. Uh, this is because of having a full valence shell. So they're the most stable as a result of a full valence shell. So here you see neon. Neon has two electrons in its innermost energy level. And then the second energy level has a full eight electrons. So neon, this noble gas, is incredibly stable. It doesn't want to give or take electrons. Metals, on the other hand, they're going to have to give away their electrons in order to have a configuration like the noble gas above them. So if we took aluminum, for example, aluminum has three valence electrons. So aluminum's Lewis structure looks like so. If aluminum gives these three electrons away, it becomes aluminum. It now has an imbalance of charge. It has uh, 13 protons. Previously, it had 13 protons and 13 electrons for a net charge of zero. Now it has 13 protons, but it gave away three electrons to have 10 total and look like this neon. So it ends up with a three plus charge. This is what we see happening here. If we look at nonmetals, they're going to be a little bit different. Instead of giving away electrons, the nonmetals need to take electrons. And they'll end up having an electron configuration like the noble gas to their right. So if we take nitrogen, for example, nitrogen has a configuration with five valence electrons. So in this case, instead of giving those five electrons away, my nitrogen needs to take three electrons. When nitrogen takes three electrons, uh, it's going to go from having seven protons and seven electrons and an overall neutral charge. If it gains three more, though, this nitrogen now still has seven protons, but it's gained three electrons for a total of ten electrons, and it will have a three minus charge. So it becomes a nitrogen three minus ion. So again, uh, just to, to summarize that idea, the aluminum ends up looking like the noble gas above it. The nitrogen ends up looking like the noble gas to its right. In either case, they're more electrically stable because they have the same number of electrons as a noble gas. Now, once an exchange of electrons has happened, when our metal and our nonmetal come together, uh, what's going to happen is they are going to then be attracted. They are going to bond. So we're going to start here this time with a cation. Okay, so that term indicates a cation typically comes from a metal and it will have a positive charge, so it lost electrons. This cation will be attracted to an anion. An anion, which typically comes from a nonmetal and has a negative charge. What we'll do is we're going to, let's say, start with sodium. Sodium has one valence electron, so when it gives that one valence electron away, it becomes a plus one ion. And we have chlorine, which is in group seven, so that has seven valence electrons. It is going to accept the electron from sodium to be a chlorine minus ion. Now that I have a positive and a negative, we're going to have an electrostatic attraction between these two. So the sodium ion and the chloride ion are attracted. And written in formula notation, we can write that just as NaCl, sodium chloride. Now, we describe these compounds, ionic compounds, with a term. They are called salts. Okay, So it doesn't have to be table salt like this, for example. Uh, you could have any pairing of a metal nonmetal, any pairing of cation anion. So just as NaCl is a salt, uh, you could have magnesium and oxygen, metal to nonmetal. That's another kind of salt. Now this forms a crystal lattice structure. The crystal lattice is actually unique. It optimizes the attractions by having positive ions bound to negative ions, to positive, to negative, and so on. So left to right, a pattern of positive to negative. Up and down, we see the same thing, a pattern of positive to negative. Front to back, if you can imagine this in three dimensions, you see the exact same pattern. So in the end, you get this 
cubic 3D structure. Ionic compounds are held by these incredibly strong electrostatic charges. So these electrostatic forces um, are going to cause a few properties here. First off, we have incredibly high melting and high boiling points. Typically, these salts are going to be solids at room temperature. So I've used my five minutes. Uh, I'm going to ask that you go ahead and pause now, work out some of these practice problems, and then I will continue and work these out with you. I'll assume you've had that time now, so we're going to begin. The most stable elements are the noble gases. Why do atoms become ions? Atoms become ions in order to become more like these noble gases, to fill their valent shell, and to become, more importantly, more electrically stable. Okay, They're becoming more electrically stable. In order to form a cation, a metal must do what? A metal must lose electrons. When two or more ions come together, what is the new substance known as? This new substance is a salt. Ionic bonds are very strong. So circle that. Ionic bonds are very strong. And it would take a lot of energy to break these bonds. Most ionic compounds, or salts, are liquids at room temperature. Is this true or false? Okay, we said before, no. Salts are solid at room temperature, so this statement is false. 